I've caught Swamp Fever! Well, look on the bright side. At least you get to be a tree. I'm really impressed with how the last couple of seasons have been handling Fluttershy. Out of all the main characters, I feel like she's gone through the most levels of development. Changing from a socially paranoid and timid pony to a very straightforward and confident pony. Even in brief appearances, she's really shown to be growing from her experiences. And what I really like about A Health of Information is how it manages to demonstrate this without putting her in a situation where she needs to assert herself instead relying on very different aspects of her character. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Zakora is helping Fluttershy collect some crisscross moss when she accidentally gets infected with a mysterious disease known as Swamp Fever. The scary thing about this is that there's no known cure, and if a cure isn't found, Zakora will turn into a tree with the flower spreading the toxic pollen. Desperate to find a cure, Fluttershy and Twilight look through information regarding the only one who may know how to cure it, Mage Meadowbrook. Their research takes them to Hayseed Swamp where she used to live and find her old research with the help of Cattail, one of her descendants. Unfortunately, Fluttershy seems to catch the disease as well, and her insistence on finding the cure is keeping her from getting the rest that she needs to properly stay focused. But then again, her insistence was making her do a lot of rust decision making beforehand, which is actually important for the message that it's trying to send. The pacing of this episode is very solid with its conflict being introduced within the first moments of the story, even having a reasonable setup to it. From beginning to end, it uses its runtime to establish the situation, how it's affecting the characters, what they're doing to find a solution, traveling to their destination, and all of the obstacles that they need to overcome along the way. It never detracts from the goal these characters are aiming towards having a strong level of focus. The episode feels very straightforward with its setup and it keeps itself going all the way through, so it continues to stay active which keeps it from being boring. It also has an enjoyably lighthearted tone with its story fitting in both a slice of life and adventurous nature, being an easygoing scenario about helping out a sick friend while involving travel to a new location. It also has some really good background elements going for it. The masks, for instance, are actually a reference to cultures who used masks as part of a healing ritual, which I think fits the cultural style that it's going for. It also has some good jokes, with clever gags and even some humorous exchanges of dialogue, and the last bit having a pretty nice time at the end. I also actually like Cattail's design. He doesn't have much of a character, but his color scheme has a good variety to it. And with that combined with his pudgy body type and hair lock style, it makes for a really standout appearance. In fact, a lot of the episode's design and style has a properly grounded feel to it, representing an enjoyable kind of New Orleans from the 1920s aesthetic. Mage Meadowbrook being the next of the comic tie-in characters, this time having a parallel to Fluttershy, also helps in building towards the secrets of the season finale. At this point, we'll probably be seeing Star Swirl with a parallel to Twilight pretty soon, and that's actually a really exciting thing to think about. What I really like about this episode is how it nails Fluttershy's character while exploring different sites to her. She's shown to be pretty clever when she reveals how she cross-referenced the information on Mage, showing that she can take resources and turn them around to her advantage. She also has a noble hyper-focus in her determination to find a cure for Sakura, and while she does neglect to listen to anyone when they tell her to slow down, the story has stuff beforehand that justifies her defiance. She feels personally responsible for what happened to Sakura, and the situation is presented to be very dire considering she could possibly die if a cure isn't found. She understands how serious this is, and she's acting hasty because it's a serious situation and they have little time to find the solution. Her hyper level of focus also displays her assertion in a new angle, not allowing anything to slow her down in her mission to save her friend. In this instance, she's displaying her assertion against a race against time instead of another character. And because of how determined she is, it has a very straightforward tone. 
Fluttershy really gets into her A-game in this episode, and she didn't even have to stand up to another character to do it. The moral that the episode goes for also has a good message, and a lot of stuff that happens in the story helps to support its point. The episode means to tell us that taking care of ourselves in order to take care of others is very important. Throughout the story, there's hints of Fluttershy being exhausted and not thinking clearly due to her lack of rest, and her hasty attitude only exhausts more of her stamina. And while this is going on, Twilight is the one telling her that she needs to slow down. It may be an opposite to how she's usually the one freaking out in these high-stakes situations, but because of the way the episode is written and how it demonstrates its moral, removing her paranoia and making her the voice of reason is necessary to helping its message make sense. Its moral is both important and told in a way that complements the story, making it more satisfying. The episode isn't perfect though, as it does have some notable problems. I mean, Mage clearly found out that it was Honey of the Flash Bees that could cure Swamp Fever, but she never made that information available outside of her village. And this was something from a long time ago. If they could record stuff from that long ago and make it accessible outside of the swamp, why couldn't she do that with the cure? I ask this because it's implied that this disease has been around for a very long time, and in that time there was no known cure. And enough was known about Swamp Fever to know that ponies can actually die from this disease. And when you really think about those disturbing implications? I can only assume that a lot of ponies have died and turned into trees. For all we know, that tree from the beginning of the episode could have been a pony that was infected and died turning into a tree. I know it's harsh to think about, but given how the episode explains this swamp fever, it's the only logical conclusion. There's also some other errors, such as why Fluttershy wasn't collecting any of the moss herself. I mean, she can fly. Can't she just hover over the lake and grab some? Hell, why didn't Sakura bring a net with her? Shouldn't that be a no-brainer when you're planning to collect stuff out of a swampy lake? I'm just saying that any one of these alternatives would have prevented Sakura from falling into the lake and getting infected in the first place. And do they really expect us to buy that Twilight knows no magic spell to counter the Flash Bees? She can freeze others in place and all kinds of other counter types of magic, yet nothing she could do was capable of fighting them off? Unless they clarify how the bees are resilient to magic, I'm not buying it. But with that said, A Health of Information was actually a pretty good episode that has some nice stuff to offer. Its story is very spot on, Fluttershy's character has a really good display here, the background elements were interesting, and its moral has a pretty good weight to it. It's an episode that I'll certainly be seeing again sometime soon. Misanthropony, over and out.